Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you. Thank you for your truth that is being poured out today. We receive our daily bread, Lord. Our hearts are open to receive and to be a blessing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, praise God. Now we're still in First Corinthians chapter 4. This, this is a very strong chapter. You just need to get everything from it. Praise God. So, so he said, we're in verse 26, where he says, hey, when we come together, everybody have something. Hear me. Hear me. Last, the last time you went to church should be the last time you went to church without anything. See? From the next time you are going to church, make sure you go to church with something. Say, what should I take? Listen, if you are a child of God, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, you go on your knees before, as you're preparing for that service. So when you're preparing, don't start looking for the best dress to wear. Say, this Sunday, I'm going to rock this dress. When I step into church, they will know. That's, may God help you. <laughs> it's good to dress well. But dress your spirit well also. Are you hearing me? Dress your spirit very well. So you're going to church. You, you go there. You, you prepare and say, Father, I'm going for fellowship today. So, so what are you giving me? What am I taking for fellowship? Who are, what do you want me to do? Do you have me to do it? You know, you're just talking to God like that. And the Lord will speak to you. He can tell you, you are going to sit beside somebody. When you sit down beside the person, I will give you words for the person. So it's not the preacher that preaches alone. You are there. You're praying and then you, you hold somebody's hand and say, Let's, oh, I, I, don't, I feel like praying with you. And then you're praying and you begin to mention exactly what the person is going through and speaking the answer to that person. Nobody has to hear. You don't have to shout it. You're just like, I want to pray with you. The Spirit of God just minister to me that I should pray with you. All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you say it calmly like that, and then the person is getting blessed. That's how it works. Praise God. Yeah, so go to church with something. Did you get that? Oh, did you get that? All right, then. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three. And let one, and, and, and that by cause, not us, one after the other. See, if it's going to be by tongues, ministry, now he's talking about ministry. So if you feel your area of specialty, you know, I don't know who told you that, that is it, but if you feel that way, you know, we choose what we want to do with God. You, you, when you feel that way, what do you do? My, my own is I speak in tongues. Say, so let it be, that's what it says, let it be by two or by three, and that by cross. And then one person must interpret. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, we, we don't see this much in the Pentecostal, I mean, today's Pentecostal setting. But if you've been to certain churches, like, um, I remember, because I grew up in the apostolic church, you know, that's where my parents, my parents still this day, they are, they are in the apostolic church, so that's where I was born. And then I know, because some of these things, I've seen them, you know, even as a little boy, I saw some of these things happen, you know, how they, they, they follow these patterns. Yeah, they do. Maybe not in the main service, maybe the prayer band meeting. They have, they have, they have people who prophesy. And then the, the, the one who's called the apostle, he is the one who, who administrates everything. See, I, I've seen those things happen. Beautiful, praise God. Now, now he says, But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in church and let him speak to himself and to God. Did you see that? If there's no interpreter, don't come out to say, I have a word. You know, you're just having fellowship. You say, Pastor, I have a word I want to give to the church. God has laid something in my heart to bless the church. And then the pastor out of trust and says, Okay, go ahead. And then he, he gives you the mic. And then you go, Mozupra Konde, Rakatoko, Balakete, Rekede, Melebele Brogodo. And then you finish for 30 minutes. You are just doing that. And when you finish, say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. He says, as a, as a pastor, as a minister, you see, 
when you see somebody is fond of doing that, the next time he says, I have a word, tell them, bros, speak to God and to yourself. <laughs> Stay in that your corner and just give the word to yourself and to God. <laughs> Praise God. That's what Paul said. Because you, you came out, you spoke the truth, but nobody got blessed. Except there is someone who got the interpretation of that. Praise God. He says, Verse 29 says, let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. Prophecy, it's not a one-man thing. You don't come, you don't get to a place and you're teaching something only you can understand. Only you. And you're forcing every other person to understand. And then when they don't understand, you say, yeah, you are, you are not initiated. You are still a babe. You are the one that have a problem. If if the people you're talking to don't understand what you are saying, you have a problem. It, it, it just means, and this is where it's important, it just means that the Spirit of God is not ministering in that place. So if He is, He is going to be speaking in their hearts and that that's how they will understand what you are saying. So it's either what you're saying is not from the Spirit of God, so He's not bearing witness in anybody's heart. Now, when you're in the midst of believers now, that's what I'm talking about. See? So, so you should be careful when you think you think you're the only learned person in this place. What I mean learning a spiritually enlightened person. You should be careful. Because anything God blesses you with, He blesses for the body. He doesn't bless you for something with something special. And you think, you know, God specially gave me this thing. Because I, you know, sometimes you hold prayer and you say, you know, you know, that's how people deceive people. You know, you, you're having prayer meeting with some people and then, and then I say, see, God has elevated us to a level that nobody has reached in this area or in this world or in this. You know, sometimes you, you, there's a church. I have seen this happen severally. There's a church, people, members of the church. Then, then one leader, he, you know, maybe he's prayer band leader or he's, he's, uh, he's giving some leadership position. And then he, he decides, look, I, I'm going to let's start having prayer meetings. Wonderful. But suddenly he begins to introduce a different spirit to the people. He begins to tell them, oh, wow. You know, it starts with prophetic utterances. Oh, the Lord said he has, he has elevated us to a level that, you know, some people who are as bold as said, even the pastor has not reached that level yet. Now, the moment you hear that thing, that is, that is a voice, the voice of the devil that is speaking. So how do you know that's the voice of the devil? Can someone else be more spiritual? Listen, the utterance, the utterance is from the devil. The Holy Spirit will never, I want you to get this, the Holy Spirit will never tell you something to lift you up and put another person down. He will never do that. He will not give you an utterance to say you're better than that person. Na, 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 kasha, kala, bragadi. That is not his character. You know, sometimes when, when you, you receive utterance, now, even as a minister, I've seen this work. You're praying. And then at that point, I was praying somewhere one day. And I'm telling you the truth. The presence of God was so strong. I was alone. The presence of God was so strong and it was too strong. And then suddenly I heard a voice. It says, do you know you're so anointed right now? You can jump into this river. Now, now that, that was a deep water. He said, you, you can jump into this river now and nothing is going to happen. Angels will just carry you. That's how spiritual you have become. Now, someone else will take that thing and say, man, wow, I mean, the, the Holy Ghost. And then he would jump in. But the moment I heard that, I knew something is wrong with this voice. Now, I was praying and fellowshipping with the Lord. And then I heard a voice. You would want to think, but I was with God now. So which other voice? That was the voice of the devil. I knew immediately. I just shifted backwards. I said, devil, you're a liar. I, I know him. He said, but, but how come you're, you're praying and you're high in the spirit? Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Who spoke to him first? If thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Someone else would have taken that voice to be the voice of God. See, see, how do you know that was the voice of the devil? First of all, it brought question to his, his divinity, to, to his personality. If thou art the son, the, the Holy Ghost will not say if you are truly the son of God. The Holy Spirit will never say things like that. 
He knows who you are. He will just simply instruct you. The Holy Spirit will not tell you, if you're a believer, go and heal that person. You know, people hear these things and you're, oh, God said I should go. And then you go and nothing and about, oh, but God said, yeah, I heard God say, I heard God. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. So don't get into that group, you know, you know what I'm saying? We are, we, are, we are now special breed before God. You know, there is no other believer. There is, you see, God has so, you know, some you know, pastors exalt their church above other churches. They say, what God is doing with us, he has never done it before in, in this whole, keep quiet. The devil is going somewhere to happen with that utterance. I'm telling you the truth. Is it that God cannot do something? He will. But is it, it comes higher, Brasha. It comes with the spirit of humility. Number one, when you find a teacher thinking he's too special, he has been so blessed by God that no other person, he can't even listen to any other person. He's going somewhere to happen negatively. Watch out for him. See? Because, see, the truth is, the Spirit of God, when He speaks to you, His words, when you receive His words, He comes with humility, number one. Number two, see, he, it's, he really remember Jesus in the book of John. I think that's John chapter 13. The Bible says when He washed the disciples' feet, what happened? The Bible says, Jesus realizing that all things have been given to Him. And he realized that he came from God and he is going back to God. Now, that moment was a moment of authority. It just dawned on him that, boy, you've got authority. You've done everything well. Now, God is releasing so much power to you. That's what came to Jesus at that moment. What did Jesus, what was the response, the physical response of Jesus? He looked around took a towel, wrapped himself, took a bowl. He says, hey, John, sit down. Yes, sir. Give me your legs. He began to wash the disciples' feet one after the other. They didn't know what he was doing. Oh, you don't know the Holy Spirit. You are there because you are the past, because you prophesy. You, everybody should come and worship you. You are the devil. I'm telling you the truth. The spirit of the Antichrist is what is working in you. Because you gave a prophecy. Everybody should kneel down to you. Something is wrong with your head. If the Holy Ghost hits you, deep revelation comes to you, your first response, if it is the Lord and you are true, your first response is to humble yourself. That's exactly what Jesus... You think he just wanted to wash the disciples' feet? No, he was responding to something. And he began to wash their feet. And God to Peter, Peter said, nah, you cannot wash my feet. How? Never at any time will you wash my feet. I mean, Peter was looking at Jesus. I mean, Peter looked at Jesus washing John's feet. He said, what's wrong? And he was just like, what's wrong with John? Can you imagine this guy? He's allowing Jesus to wash his feet. Jesus got to Thomas. And then he got to Andrew. And then he got to James. And I said, are these guys mad? You know Peter now? <laughs> Let's go. Yes, uh, he made up his mind saying, nah, 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 nah. Maybe Jesus is testing all of us in this place. I will not fail this test. <laughs> Praise God. And Jesus will say, nah. Say, Lord, mm -mm. you cannot wash my feet. I will not agree to that. How? And then Jesus said, hey, hey, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you're not part of me. If I do not wash your feet, you will no longer be my disciple. <laughs> Peter said, eh, is that what you're doing? Oh, yeah. My hands, my head, wash everything. I'm deep inside of you, praise God. Yeah. But I want you to understand Jesus was responding to something. Look at what happened before he started washing the disciples' feet. You will understand. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray. I pray. If you're watching me right now, and you have ever been overtaken by the spirit of pride, I pray for you right now. You see, because let me tell you something. When the devil starts out with you like that, he's taking you somewhere and you will not like your end. It may be a long walk, but your end is sure. Destruction. So let the spirit of humility rest upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord will walk in your heart and bring you to the place Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm speaking to someone right now. You don't know what 
the Lord have put in store for you. And you are thinking right now that you have arrived. Yeah. You are thinking you've arrived. But I hear the Lord say there is far more than you can ever imagine that he has placed ahead of you. But if you will let your heart be humble before the Lord. <clears throat> ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are called to serve someone. You, you are serving someone right now. You are serving your, your own pastor right now. But you are having that struggle because you feel you teach better than your pastor. I hear the Spirit of God say, where he has planned for you is far ahead. But you must be humble and set your heart before the Lord to only do what he commands you to do. And not get out before your time. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Receive that word and let the spirit of humility rest upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.